The first key to attaining spiritual maturity is wanting to mature spiritually. If you don't want to grow, you won't. No runner has ever reached a finish line without deciding that they were going to do so. We see this desire in the sixth chapter of John. You see, there's two groups of people who are following Jesus, and they're clearly delineated between the people who want spiritual maturity and, well, those who don't. Jesus feeds a multitude of people, numbering somewhere around 5,000 more, if you count the women and the children. And he feeds them to filling, and does so with leftovers, all from five loaves and two fish. The crowd is amazed. Uh, they call him a prophet and, and consider taking him and making him king. They're tremendously impressed by his ability to feed their stomachs. What Jesus can do for their physical bodies is the focus. Jesus then slips away from this crowd, not wanting to be forced into kingship on these terms. This is what Jesus tells the crowd when they catch up to him the next day. Truly, truly, I say to you, you are seeking me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. For on him, God the Father has set his seal. Jesus is telling the crowd to desire something more than just physical nourishment or, or the betterment of the body. Those things are important. If they weren't, why would Jesus have fed them? But what Jesus urges here is approaching him for something fundamentally more precious. The, the food of eternal life. Jesus tells the crowd that he is the bread of life. That in him they can find nourishment for more than just their bodies, but for their whole being as well. Many of them are unsatisfied with this. In verse 66, we're told, after this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer walked with him. So Jesus said to the 12, do you want to go away as well? And Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life, and we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. The crowds that leave don't desire spiritual growth. Now, maybe some of them did, and they struggled in understanding how Jesus would bring that about. Maybe theirs wasn't a failure of desire, and perhaps later they would return to Jesus as their understanding grew. We're not expressly told that, but it's certainly a possibility. However, there is another element to this crowd that both recognizes the message of Jesus, even if only at a foundational level, and desires the spiritual nourishment that he offers. Which crowd do we fall into? Do we desire bread, physical things that maybe bring us full stomachs or momentary satisfaction, or do we desire the bread of life, the spiritual nourishment that Jesus alone can offer that Jesus alone is. I love you, and today I encourage you to consider if spiritual maturity is something you desire. If it's not, ask yourself why that might be.